In this video, we're going to discuss how the equilibrium quotient Q changes over time as it approaches K at equilibrium, and Le Chatelier's principle. Consider the generic equilibrium written. Hit pause and write the expression Q for this equilibrium. If you need help, look in the notes to this video and you'll see a link to our video on the introduction to chemical equilibrium. You'll notice in the expression for Q, the squared is because of the stoichiometric factor 2 in front of the C. Let's imagine that you prepared a solution now in which you dissolve two moles of C, one mole of A, and two moles of B in a total volume of one liter of solution. We would then calculate a value for Q of 2 squared over 1 times 2, which would get us a value of 2. And the question is, what would happen now? And that all comes down to one question. Is Q less than, equal, or greater than K? Since K is the value of Q once we've reached equilibrium, there's one of three possibilities. That Q is less than K right now, Q is equal to K right now, or Q is greater than K right now. Remember that Q is the ratio of products to reactants, which means that a big Q means lots of products, a little Q means lots of reactants. And so if Q is less than K, that means that the ratio of products to reactants is not yet quite right to be at equilibrium. In fact, the amount of products will have to increase in order to reach equilibrium. Conversely, if Q is greater than K, Right now, the ratio of products to reactants is too large, which means that the reactants will increase as we move towards equilibrium. And finally, if Q happens to be equal to K, that means that the ratio of products to reactants is exactly what we would expect at equilibrium, and so this ratio will not change over time. Let's return to the example that we started previously and see what happens when we reach equilibrium. At some point, the amounts of products and reactants in our example have stopped changing, and we write the value of K in terms of the activities of the products over the activities of the reactants, and we get a value of 12. Le Chatelier asks a very interesting question. He says, what would happen if, at this point, I did absolutely nothing? Well, since Q is equal to K, that means we're at equilibrium, and so the amounts of products and reactants would remain unchanged. But he goes further and says, well, what would happen if I did something else? What would happen if I were to add more A? Well, if we're, I were to add more A, what I'm doing essentially is I'm increasing the denominator in the expression for Q. And if I increase the denominator in the expression for Q, my new value of Q is actually less than the value that it was when it was at equilibrium. And if it's less than the value it was when it was at equilibrium, that means I'm no longer at equilibrium. And what that means is that the amounts of products will increase and the amounts of reactants will decrease until such time as I get to equilibrium. We can do the same thing for what would happen if I would remove some product C. Well, let's work through it. If I were to remove product C, what I'm doing is I'm decreasing the value of Q. I'm making my new value of Q once again small. And if that's the case, more product will form and more reactant will be consumed as we go towards equilibrium. And this is Le Chatelier's principle, which is that at equilibrium, Q will always be equal to K. And so if I've done something to change the value of Q, then Q over time will change to get back to K.